I'm Edie Lodge and I'm executive editor of Hub Culture. Really pleased to be here now at the Ice Hub in Glasgow with Maggie Brashani. Thanks for coming along. Thanks for having me. CEO of Nobel Foods. So tell me, first of all, when did the climate emergency become real for you? Yeah, it's very personal for me. So about six years ago, I became aware of our food system and its impact on climate. Uh, I had no idea that a third of all the emissions on this planet come from our food system. And really what I discovered is that half of that number is from animal agriculture. So raising animals for food is extremely inefficient. Uh, and when I found that out, it was through my dairy allergy and looking into why I'm allergic to dairy, understanding how we make milk and more generally the broader issues with the food system. I started the company like it was literally around the time where I discovered that all these issues were real I need to deal with them and I wanted to be part of the change and have a solution that doesn't ask people to sacrifice on things mm. uh, so it's been a few years now <laughs> so that phrase you just used not asking people to sacrifice things so because I think yeah. that one of the um, one of the challenges is this idea of vegan cheese. People don't really like that idea, but tell me what you're doing, how it's, how it's different yes. from that idea. Yeah, so um, absolutely. So basically, cheese that does not come from an animal right now is 1% of the market. It's a tiny, tiny fraction. And some of the challenges with that is the taste and the functionality. Like if you've had vegan cheese, sometimes it's hard to make it taste like animal cheese mm. or make it melt on a pizza. And I had these struggles when I transitioned my diet into a plant-based diet. And what we do is we bro broke down dairy into its key components. And when you look at dairy from a molecular level, mm -hmm. you realize it's mostly water with a little bit of protein, fat, and sugars. And all of these can be kind of sourced from plants, but mm -hmm. the dairy proteins are very unique and give dairy and cheese in particular all of its functionality and mouthfeel, all mm -hmm. the things we love about it. So what we do is the last five years, we figured out a way to make dairy proteins, but from plants. Hmm. So we basically innovated plants. So they not just make plant proteins, they're making dairy proteins. We harvest these proteins and make all sorts of dairy products, basically that compete on taste, functionality, melt, stretch, have all the mouthfeel that you're looking for. Because it's hard. When I said no sacrifice, I mm -hmm. mean, it, it's, you know, we all want to eat delicious food all the time all the time and we don't want to give anything up but i think that it's not a path that we need to keep going on it's not sustainable it's not feasible we cannot keep doing everything the same way we do it and not be in a crisis with the climate tell me a little more about how you do it how do you make have plants make these proteins yeah it's actually not you know the idea is not that complicated but the genetic code is universal, meaning that the reason a cow makes the protein, there's a code in the DNA that tells the cow to make the protein. Mm -hmm. We know what that code is, and you can basically program the plant with that code. So instead of making a plant protein, it makes a dairy protein. Hmm. Uh, so we modify the genome of the plant. So it's producing the exact same dairy proteins that you can usually just get from a cow. Okay, so where do I find these? What do we call them? Do we not? We don't call them cheeses, though, do we? I call it cheese. I think okay. it's important for us to rethink of how we define cheese, meat, dairy, eggs, mm -hmm. and think of yes, it can come from an animal or it can come from another source, mm -hmm. right? Because what we're making is meant to be eaten like cheese, meant to be used, consumed the same way that we do with cheese. It's just made from plants, not mm -hmm. from cows. Uh, unfortunately, you can't find them right now, okay. but by the end of next year, you will be able to get our product in the U.S. Okay, fantastic. Yes, um, yeah, exciting. So what is next? What's the next step for you after these products are available in the U.S.? What's the kind of plan? <laughs> so dairy as a category has so many products. Cheese is one of them. Even within cheese, there's thousands of varieties of cheese. Mm. Uh, so going more broad on the products, so going into different types of cheeses and also going more into other categories of dairy. But we also want to address all the issues in the food system. So dairy is one, but meat is another one. And we're looking at other you know, applications and things to do on the, on the meat side. So could you grow meat proteins from within a plant as well? Yeah, you could. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but there's other things. So protein, for example, like there's proteins are one way to make 
great products, but you also can think of the fat profile as well, because mm -hmm. right now there aren't great solutions for replacing animal fat. So there are different ways to look at the problems and so many opportunities for innovation there, whether it's from the protein or the fat side, whether it's in dairy or meat or, you know, or even eggs and other meat categories that are not just you know, meat, meat, but chicken and mm -hmm. fish. And so there's a lot that we need to do and a lot of work that needs to happen in the next few years. It has to happen quickly too, because we're running out of time. Okay, just back to the cheese, because now I'm thinking yeah. about all the hundreds of categories, kinds of cheeses <laughs> that, for example, you can get in France, right? Yeah. So what's the, what are you starting with? And what about um, nice blue cheese? Can I get a nice blue cheese? We actually you? made a prototype of a blue cheese that was incredible. Hmm. I wish, uh, if I knew that, I would have tried to ship you something. <laughs> but, but basically, if you look at the market and where most of the consumption is coming from, it's from mozzarella and cheddar. They right. make up 60% of the market in the U.S. at mm -hmm. least. It's a huge part of it. And pizza is dri driving the sales of mozzarella. We right. love to eat pizza and that's right. a big cheese product. Mm -hmm. uh, and then fast food is the second one. So in terms of impact and how we're going to be able to really make a dent in the food system with cheese, we're starting with these two areas because that's where the volumes are. The blue cheese is super exciting, mm. but it's a much smaller market, so it's maybe something. You mean I'm a small, I'm a smaller market? It makes me sad. <laughs> you should be <laughs> special. You're but special. special. Exactly. Uh, but we will get there okay. in terms of the more niche opportunities. But in terms of impact, going after the largest volumes is where our focus is. I like pizza too. Okay, so it's 2030. We've achieved the sustainable development goals. What does that look like specifically for you? For me, it's being able to walk into any store that sells cheese, let's say like any pizza chain mm -hmm. on the planet and being able to get a whole pizza or whole meal that's made without an animal involved in the process and without paying more for it. Mm -hmm. Because even you know today when you go and get your coffee, if you want oat milk or whatever, an alternative milk, you have to pay a premium. Mm -hmm. So I think, accessibility, availability, being out there and also not asking people to pay more for it because that's a burden that we that makes it harder for the adoption. So that's my dream. <laughs> I love that dream. Yeah. Thank you so much, Maggie yeah. Rajani, for dropping by the ice hub here <laughs> in Glasgow at COP26 and I'm Evie Lush.